What up you fluffy bastards, my name is Liquid Blitz, and today we are looking at everything to do with vehicles in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I'm talking in-depth comparisons, I'm talking stats and stats and facts, I'm talking helpful tips, just across the board, everything to do with vehicles. If you stay, you will learn everything there is to learn about vehicles. Now, I have to say right off the bat that every single statistic and number that you see in this video, I have worked out and tested for myself. I haven't ripped any single number in this video from anywhere else, um, which does mean that um, you, if you if you look up this information that I'm talking about uh, elsewhere, you'll probably find different numbers. But I mean, I've worked it out to the best of my ability by myself. To make this whole experience as easy and clear as possible, I've split up all the information into sections, sections which you're going to see on screen, um, so you can see the information for yourself. Just in case you don't want to listen to me. If you don't want to watch the entire video, I'm putting timestamps on each section on the screen so you can just go to a specific section if you want to hear about that. Without further ado, the sections are number one, speed, acceleration and boosting. Here we're going to look at top speeds, top speeds while boosting, um, acceleration from zero to top speed. And, and I'm also, I've also invented my own statistic called realistic average speed which is the range of speeds you're going to be driving at most of the time. I mean, top speed is all good and well, but most of the time you won't be driving at top speed. Section 2 is fuel efficiency. Here we're going to compare each vehicle's fuel usage over a specific distance on the map. Anyway, section 3 is probably the most interesting, um, and I haven't found this information anywhere else on the internet, so I might be the first one to work out vehicle health and bullets to kill or bullets to destroy each vehicle, because they're all different. This section took me the longest to make by far. I have tested and tested and tested. And finally, I've worked out the health value for each specific vehicle, which is, as I said, information which I haven't found anywhere else. So you saw it here first, people. Anyway, section four, seats and notes. This is just a more sort of simple section showing how many seats he's got and just some general notes, um, a basic description for each vehicle. Finally, we have section number five, extra vehicular tips. Here, we have just some sort of extra random helpful tips and information about the vehicles which don't really fit into any of the previous sections. So this is more of a general tips section. So those are the five sections, and, and they won't just be stats, by the way. I will include relevant tips in each section. Okay, let's just get started. Section number one, speed, acceleration, and boosting. I checked other people, first of all, I checked other people's um, values for top speed and acceleration. Uh, but I ain't no thief, I ain't no fool. I decided to test it all myself. And just as a kind of proof, uh, my results were actually quite different to the other values that I found online. Now, contrary to the gameplay in the background, I did test each vehicle multiple times, but I, I wasn't gonna record it each time, so you're just gonna see the gameplay of, of one speed test. Anyway, enough stalling. Let's start with the fastest and work our way down to the slowest. Now, all these speed and acceleration values, I've tested, uh, I've gone out of my way to test it on flat surfaces, flat roads. So keep in mind that if you go downhill, you will reach faster speeds than I'm about to list. First of all, we have the bike, the regular motorbike. It has a top speed of 150 kilometers an hour, and it reaches that from standing in 15 seconds. Now, an interesting thing to note is that the, ni neither the bike nor the bike with the sidecar um, has a boost. They're the only vehicles which don't boost. Um, so I've just put an NA there. And to be honest, that is sensible. I mean, uh, boosting on a bike is just dangerous. Now, the regular motorbike is the fastest vehicle in the game, but it also has the fastest acceleration uh, as well as top speed. I mean, this thing is a speed demon, and because it gets to, to such high speeds so quickly, you're going to be driving this thing easily over, I would say, 120 uh, kilometers an hour most of the time, except when traversing hills and just rough terrain. So realistically, your average is going to be high. So let's just say 120 to 140 kilometers an hour. Anyway, the next fastest is the bike with a sidecar attached. Now, as you would imagine, uh, taking the regular bike and adding a sidecar to it, it seriously increases the weight and slows the entire thing down. Both top speed and acceleration suffer as a result. This means it has a top speed of 135 um, kilometers an hour, and it reaches that in a slower time as well as a slower acceleration. It reaches it from standing to 135 in 22 seconds. And once again, it's a bike, so it has no boost. Now, while it is markedly slower than the bike without a sidecar, it is still the second fastest vehicle in the game. So realistically, your average is still gonna be pretty damn high. So I'm gonna put the average at, uh, let's say 110 to 125 most of the time. 
Next, third on our list is the buggy. It has a top speed of 91 kilometers an hour, and it reaches that from still in 12 seconds. Now, we have a special note here. Unlike all other vehicles that can boost, the buggy uniquely doesn't go any faster than its, in it, than its normal top speed when you boost. So it has a regular top speed of 91, and its top speed when you're boosting is also 91. So in other words, if you're close, I would say, to around 90, don't bother boosting, it's a complete waste of fuel. Only boost in the buggy to reach the top speed a little bit faster. The buggy is actually quite a unique vehicle in several ways. Um, considering its top speed isn't great, it actually reaches the top speed with ease, which is why it's only got a 12 second uh, acceleration time. So realistically, you're going to be doing near the top speed with this vehicle most of the time, and even higher when you're going downhill, so I would say that gives it an average of 87 to 92. Now next on our list is the Dacia, a lot of people's favourite vehicle, the Dacia. The Dacia has a top speed of 89 kilometers an hour, and it'll reach that in a very slow 25 seconds. But, and this is probably the best part of the Dacia, when you boost, its top speed raises a long way to 116. It has a very good boost. So yeah, as you can see, the Dacia has quite possibly the worst acceleration of all vehicles. So while the top speed is still better than the UAZ, which we'll get to next, uh, realistically, with turning and uneven ground and, and just rough terrain, you're probably going to be averaging in the range of 50 to 70. I mean, this is not a hill-friendly vehicle. Anyway, next we have the UAZ. Clearly not built for speed, it's the slowest land vehicle. Driving on flat surfaces, it has a top speed of 84, and it'll reach that from stationary in 25 seconds. Now, while it has the slowest top speed, uh, again, unlike the buggy, it does increase uh, when you boost, uh, for, thank God. So when you're boosting, its top speed rises all the way to 95, which isn't that bad for, a, for an armored jeep. Naturally, in terms of a realistic average speed, you're going to be spending most of your time in the region of about 65 to 80. And finally, lastly, we have the only water vehicle, the boat. Unlike land vehicles, the boat reaches its top speed very fast in just five seconds to the best of my timing ability. Now, the boat does also have a boost, and not everyone seems to know that fact, um, but that boost will see speeds of around 87 to 91 kilometers an hour. It goes up and down sort of quickly because of how the boat sort of bounces across the water. Now, realistically, because you're on the water and because there's, you know, you don't have any hills to worry about, you're going to be doing the top speed pretty much constantly. And if you boost every now and then, you'll get an average speed of easily, I would say, sort of 73 to 83. So that's it for speed and acceleration. Now, before we leave the section, there's a couple of tips and just pieces of information which are nice to know. First of all, boosting in a vehicle uses between two to five times more fuel than normal depending on the vehicle. I mean, the general rule that I've found is that the heavier a vehicle is, the more fuel it burns through when boosting. For example, I mean, endlessly just constant boosting in the UAZ, you're only going to travel 20 to 25% the distance you would if you weren't boosting. But conversely, the buggy, however, only uses about two times the amount of fuel when boosting, which is a lot better. And the Dacia is somewhere in the middle of those two. You get the idea. The next piece of information I have for you is, is kind of obvious. Boosting reaches the top speed faster. So all the acceleration times you've seen on the screen, that is from, from stationary to top speed without any boost whatsoever. With boost, the vehicle speeds up even faster. Boosting to accelerate even faster is a very good idea for in a couple of situations. Like, number one, if you're in immediate danger, like people are shooting at you, etc. You need to boost to accelerate as fast as possible and get the fuck out of there. It's also good in the opposite situation, where you know you're in a safe area with no other people, and you can spare the extra fuel and risk the extra noise, which leads to my next piece of information. Boosting makes vehicles louder, and you could be heard from further away. So in other words, if you're trying to make like a quick, stealthy approach, don't boost, because you're just increasing the chance that someone is going to hear you. Now let's move on to section number two, fuel consumption. Now we're going to take a look at how thirsty each vehicle is, how much fuel it uses. If you look at the vehicle fuel gauge, you'll see it split into 20 small bars, which means each bar is 5% fuel total. So we are going to measure how much fuel it takes each vehicle to travel across one square of the map. And when I say a square of the map, I mean the big yellow ones like CK and FL on the, on the map grid, not the small white ones. Just so you know, each big yellow square on the map is one kilometer squared or a thousand meters squared. Now, each big yellow square, if you zoom in, is actually um, 10 smaller white squares wide. 
which means each small white square is 100 meters in distance. Now this is important because it can help you with zeroing, zeroing your weapon. For example, if you spot an enemy in a building, then you look at your map and you work out that you're two small white squares distance away from that building, you know you are 200 meters exactly away, so you can zero your weapon to 200 meters. So long story short, pay attention to distances. It's a, it's a vastly overlooked feature of the game and it, it's really important. Actually, I might make a separate video entirely just to do with zeroing in Battlegrounds. Now, as usual, keep in mind that all the information you're about to see is based on my personal testing and conditions for fuel uh, testing weren't perfect since all the testing had to be done in real time in real games. It was a pain in the arse. So what I'm saying is just take these values with a pinch of salt. And pepper. Now, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to keep the vehicles in the same order that they were in the speed section. Now, just to reiterate, the test is the fuel usage over one map square, which is one kilometer. So let's get a lot of ones in the right hand section. First of all, we have the bike. Now, the bike used to the, to the best of my eyes ability to see exactly one bar, which is 5% fuel. Now, the bike with the sidecar attached, I actually counted it as slightly over a bar. I mean, I mean, it would make logical sense as well, since it has extra weight, it's going to use extra fuel. So I, I counted 1.1 bars, which is 5.5% fuel. Next, we have the buggy, which I found to be the most fuel efficient. And again, to the best of my eyes abilities, um, I, I measured about 0 0.8 bars, which is only 4% fuel. Next, we have the Dacia, which I, I measured a pretty damn accurate 0 0.9 uh, bars, uh, which is 4.5% fuel. Finally, the last land vehicle, we have the UAZ, and this was a bit more sluggish. Uh, I found that it used just over a bar, so I've said 1.1 bars, which is again 5.5% fuel. And finally, we have the water vehicle, the boat. And again, just over a bar I found, so 1.1 bars. As you can see, they are all very close. I was expecting a bigger variation, to be honest, uh, but it's good to know all the same. My biggest surprise was actually from the bike's fuel consumption. I thought motorbikes were sort of really, really good for fuel efficiency. But from my testing, the buggy and the Dacia were both slightly better. Now, I won't lie, when I, when I figured out all these values and, and they seem so damn close, I thought, is it just universal? Is it just one bar and, and my eyes are lying to me? But no, I, I did test a couple of vehicles more than once and I was, I'm convinced that the buggy uses less than 5% than fuel um, to, to cross one kilometer. And the, I'm, I'm sure the UAZ uses more than 5% fuel. So I'm, damn, I'm pretty damn certain that it's not universal, that they are actually all different, just to back up my claims. Anyway, as with before, before we move on to the next section, there's a couple of like tips and just pieces of information which are nice to know. Vehicles spawn with between 40 and 100% fuel. I mean, that is a large range of, of possibility, but if you find a vehicle with like 40% fuel, it may well not be enough to get you where you want to be uh, in the end. So, I mean, if you want to hang on to a vehicle throughout a game, and a lot of people do that, they keep driving to the circle when it gets smaller and smaller. If, if you do find a vehicle with like 40% fuel, just keep an eye out for those fuel jerry cans because it may well be required. And speaking of the fuel jerry cans, fuel cans always replenish 50% of a fuel tank. Nice and simple. Now the final mention I will make in this section, and this, this is just speculation, there's no testing here at all. But you would think that sort of freewheeling and going sort of uphill versus downhill would affect fuel consumption differently. I mean, it does in real life, it's, it's logic. But from, but from all the testing that I've done, I've honestly found no difference. My testing suggests that fuel consumption is actually purely based on distance. But then again, maybe, I mean, maybe it's just that the extra fuel like needed to go uphill is balanced out by the moments when you go downhill and freewheel. So maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's based on distance, but maybe it's actually more realistic and based on sort of how much you actually use the fuel. Who knows? Anyway, let's move on to section number three, vehicle armor or vehicle health slash bullets to kill slash destroy. Now, I ain't gonna lie, this section took fucking ages. It took absolutely ages to get all this information, but it's worth it, damn it. Now, obviously, I can't chart out how many bullets to, to destroy each vehicle for every weapon. That would be ridiculous. And to make things 10 times more complicated, um, with the exception of assault rifles, different ammo types do different amounts of damage in different weapons. 
For example, a 9mm bullet from a UMP or VSS does more damage than a 9mm bullet from an Uzi or a P92 pistol. Now, as I said, the, the one exception is assault rifles, where 5.56 ammo and 7.62 ammo do specific uh, damages, regardless of which rifle you're using. And since people use assault rifles more than any other weapon type, and especially when shooting vehicles, people tend to use assault rifles, I've decided to measure bullets to kill, or measure bullets to destroy each vehicle, with assault rifle 5.56 and 7.62. And I'm also throwing in 9mm uh, bullets to destroy for the UMP slash VSS, since the UMP is popular as well. So just to make that crystal clear, outside of assault rifles, the damage depends on the weapon. A sniper rifle shooting 7.62 ammo does more damage than an assault rifle shooting 7.62 ammo. So in other words, if you're using a sniper rifle, it will take fewer shots than I'm about to list. And just so you know, I've determined the health values as close as possible by first testing how much damage, how many bullets it takes to destroy a vehicle, and choosing the most rounded number between that and one bullet less worth of damage. Does that make sense? As one bullet less wouldn't destroy it, so the, the health value has to be somewhere in that small range. Now that small range makes it pretty obvious what the health value is, because it's, it's, it's a round number like a thousand or two thousand. So moving forward, just keep that in mind, that the health values, while they may not be 100% accurate, they are accurate to within one bullet's worth of damage. So that is pretty damn accurate. Now I'm going to rattle through these pretty quickly. Both bikes are the same. I mean, adding a sidecar wouldn't give a vehicle more armor, so that makes logical sense. Both bikes will be destroyed by 25 5.56 bullets, 21 7.62 bullets, or 29 9mm bullets. And I forgot to mention that they have 1,000 health. A nice, lovely, round 1,000 health each. Now, the next on the list is the buggy. We're getting a bit stronger now, and it has a health value as close as I can work out as 1,550 health. Now, that will take 38 5.56 bullets to destroy, 33 7.62 bullets to destroy, or 45 9mm bullets to destroy. And then even tougher still, we have the Dacia at 1,800 health. 1,800. Have you noticed the, the vehicle order is the same as all the other sections? And that is, at this time, it's by coincidence. So the faster a vehicle, the less health it's got. I mean, it's, it makes logical sense. But yeah, you'll be able to destroy the Dacia with 44 5.56 ammo bullets, 38 7.62 bullets, or 52 9mm bullets. And then finally, we have the Juggernaut itself, the UAZ, the Jeep, and that has a health value of 2,000. Th that will take 49 5.56 bullets to destroy, 42 7.62 bullets to destroy, or 58 9mm bullets to destroy. Now, I've got to say, a lot of those, I've worked out all these to, as, as I said, they are all accurate to within, well, zero bullets. That, that, that's exact, those, those bullet values are 100% correct. The one exception, um, as, you, as you can see on the screen, I, I worked out the 9mm retroactively by dividing uh, the determined health values which I had previously worked out by 35 damage, which is the 9mm damage of the UMP and the VSS. So just a bit of maths to work out the 9mm bullets required to kill. So, so with the 9mm values, the bullets to kill may vary by one bullet. But as I was about to say, I'm surprised by those values. I thought vehicles in general were a bit tougher than that, but I mean, the UAZ, for, like 42762, a, a squad that has AKs can absolutely rail a UAZ in no time at all. I'm honestly surprised by how few bullets you need to kill these. Anyway, let's move on to section number four, a nice simple section, seats and my own personal notes, sort of a little description for each vehicle. First of all, we have the bike, only has two seats, so perfect vehicle for, for playing duo and getting to somewhere really fast. So my notes for this simply are, it's the fastest vehicle, but it's also, I would say, the most exposed, and it's a very unstable vehicle. I mean, if you flip over, you are off the bike, so very unstable. Next, we have the bike with a sidecar attached. This, appropriately, has three seats instead. Um, now, it's the, this, the sidecar does give it a slower speed and acceleration than the regular bike, and I would say it's even more unstable than the regular bike, because... The sidecar is on one side, all the weight it gets put on one side and it makes it very lopsided, especially when sort of um, getting a bit of air time going over hills and stuff. You, you will feel when you drive this, it's lopsided. I, I don't like it at all. Anyway, next we have the buggy. Now this is two seats. I, I've generally described this as, as having medium armor and medium speed. 
But the, the biggest thing to note is that the, the passenger seat is on the back of the vehicle up high. It is very, very exposed. I mean, to be honest, even the driver in the buggy is a little bit exposed because there's no doors or sort of panels or anything. So it's quite an exposed vehicle. And frankly, if you're a passenger in one of these, you should be shitting yourself most of the time. Next, we have the Dacia. Now, this is a very squad-friendly four seats. Perfect for your, for your squad of four. Now, there's a couple of things of note. First of all, slow acceleration. I mean, this is a very slow vehicle. I know I've written down the zero to top speed acceleration um, for both the UAZ and the Dacia to be 25 seconds, but that's to top speed. To like 0 to 60 kilometers an hour, the Dacia is actually slower than the UAZ. So this is the slowest accelerating vehicle in the game. The, the plus side is it has a very decent protection in terms of visual cover. I mean, you've got a roof, you've got the side metal panels protecting you, so, so you, you, your party of four have pretty good cover in this vehicle. I mean, it's actually, it handles better than the UAZ as well in terms of turn speed, etc. It's actually also the second heaviest armoured vehicle, uh, I mean, behind the UAZ, which I've been speaking of. And speaking of which, the UAZ. The UAZ has five seats. It's the most armoured vehicle in the game, as we've already discussed. It's got 2,000 health, which is a pretty large health pool. Now, the, the, the only thing of note, really, is that the open top version, uh, and I suppose the cloth top version, because there's actually three versions. There's, there's a completely open top one. There's the there's the sort of cloth top one, and then there's the just the standard metal top one. The open top and the cloth top, especially the open top, is, is, is much more exposed. So if you have a choice, I would go for the more armoured one with a metal roof and sides because it's it's just it's just more protection, man. Protect your your round, lovely, shiny head. Last but not least, we have the water vehicle, the boat, which also, like the UAZ, has five seats. Uh, I've written two words here: totally exposed. I mean, it's I've also written useful for escaping the circle and avoiding bridges. Under certain circumstances, it can be easier to jump in one of these boats and just sail down the coast to escape the circle when it's getting smaller, or just to reach like an untouched town to, to loot it like crazy before anyone else gets there. I mean, when you think about it, ain't no hills or obstacles on the water. It's also a very good idea to sail across. Let's say the circle is getting smaller and smaller and it, and it, and it shrinks onto the military island and you need to cross one of those dangerous bridges where people are always watching. Sometimes it's safer to just get in the boat and sail across, uh, maybe sail around the island, etc., rather than risk crossing the bridge because, you know, people sometimes create blockades. There's often snipers watching the bridge. It's just a death trap. Now, once again, before I move on to the next section, a couple of pieces of information. And th this first one is a big deal that a lot of people actually still don't know. Keep in mind that anyone can get into your vehicle. Now, you may be wondering why the hell I'm, I'm saying this, because if you're playing like solo by yourself, you just drive away. This is most troublesome with the fifth seat in the UAZ. The, the fifth seat is in the middle at the back, and it, basically, if you're in like a squad of four in a UAZ, an enemy, a, a random dude, can jump in in the middle seat at the back with a gun and take you all out. It can happen. Anyway, the next uh, really useful piece of information is that you can quick switch seats um, by holding on PC. You can hold you, you hold control and press one, two, three, four, and five to switch to the different seat positions. I mean, that's more of a tip for sort of new players. When I was new, um, the first couple of, you, you quite often get in a vehicle and you get accidentally in the passenger seat instead of the driver's seat, etc. Or maybe you, you get in the driver's seat, but you actually want one of your squad mates to drive instead. Um, when you're a new player, I mean, I personally just jumped out the vehicle, let them jump in, and then I would jump back in. But you can just hold control and press two, three, four, five to switch. It's a much, it's a very simple and easy way to switch seats. Anyway, that's it for seats and notes. Let's move on to section number five, general helpful tips. Now, the first three sort of tips are all linked. So let's start at the beginning. Some vehicle spawns are a 100% chance. There's a website which has a map and interactive. There's actually a couple of different websites, but I'm, I'm, I like one in particular. There's a link in the description going to a map of the Battlegrounds Island. Now, on this, it shows all the, well, it shows many, many things, including loot positions. But what I'm fo focusing on is that it shows vehicle spawn spots. So I, I suggest you click on that link in the description and learn, uh, learn some of the spots, at least, on some of the main roads. That will really help you out. And to, to be even more helpful, on this map that I've linked, the red car symbols are the 100% car spawn spots. The grey ones are, aren't always guaranteed. 
So yeah, do yourself a favor. Go on that map and check specifically for the red symbols, the 100% spawns, because, um, I mean, you can make a beeline, once you've jumped from the plane, you can make a beeline straight for those spawns and you know they're going to be there. Then you can just take the car and drive it to sort of an untouched town to, to loot the hell out of it. And that pretty much leads me on to my next tip, which I, which I just basically said, but I'll, just for completion's sake, I'll, I'll, I'll say it properly. It's often a good tactic to jump from the plane at the, at the start of a game and fly down specifically to a 100% vehicle spawn spot, instead of flying towards like a town or a group of buildings for loot. It's often a good idea to fly to the vehicle and then drive to a, a town far away where there isn't going to be anyone else, because then you have a whole town to yourself to loot. Although keep in mind, there may well be other people trying to do the same tactic. Anyway, next piece of useful information. Did you know passengers on bikes can shoot with one-handed weapons? So you can't you can't fire an assault rifle, but if you've got a pistol or maybe a shotgun, but I, but I don't think so. I think it's just pistols. Um, you can use it as a passenger on a bike. Fun fact. Next piece of information. Unlike all other land vehicles, bikes' wheels are bulletproof. This may get changed at some point in the future. I mean, no one really seems to know whether it's a bug or not. I mean, some people spe uh, speculate that the bike's wheels are bulletproof um, because basically for balance purposes, because shooting shooting, shooting a bike's tire when a rider is, is going along 150 kilometers an hour, is just an instant death. Anyway, the next point is also to do with bikes. Bikes are just, keep in mind that they are more unstable and cause much more damage to you uh, than other vehicles when they're sort of flipping and bouncing, primarily because it throws you yeah. off the damn bike. Although on the on the flips, like most things have pros and cons, it, it, it throws you off the bike so you take more damage. But on the flip side, the positive side, unlike cars, uh, you can pick a bike back up. I mean, when, when a car flips over, it's it's done. But bikes, you can just pick back up. Now, the final tip for this video, the final piece of information in this video, again, is for motorbikes. <laughs> yeah. You can set keybinds to pitch up or pitch down when you're in midair on a bike. Now, this is so useful, I would say it's beyond useful and it's actually a requirement. So go and set those keybinds to useful keys. I mean, I've got spacebar as my tilt back and I've got uh, control as my lean forward. It is so helpful. I mean, the number of times on a bike that you go flying through the air it's it happens all the time so you need to make sure you can pitch up and down to correct your in-flight uh you know uh, position and, and tilt trust me it will save you a lot of health and a lot of crashes anyway that is pretty much it for this video i'm sure this has been probably the longest video i've ever made this video honestly took me a while to make it literally took me like a week to make uh, and that's because of, of all the testing and the testing and the testing and the testing and the fact that I can only test in actual live games surrounded by 99 other people who all want to kill my ass. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found this useful. Like this video if you liked it, like this video if you didn't like it and join me in the next video. Liquid Blitz out.